Hey guys, Mike here and in this clip I'm going to take you through the Samsung Galaxy S5's main features and through a couple of tips and tricks that should enhance your experience with this phone. However, keep in mind that this is only the first clip in this series. More detailed tips and tricks videos will follow up in a few days as I get to familiarize myself with the device. I'll link it for you in the description once I'll publish it. In the meantime, hit the thumbs up button and let's get started. Alright, first let's look at a few outer features. The Galaxy S5 is now IP certified but that doesn't really make it waterproof. The IP67 certification states that the phone can be submerged in water up to 1 meter deep for up to 30 minutes. In practice, that means that you can get it wet or use it to take some pictures and videos at the pool, but still need to be careful and not leave it soaked or immersed for too long. Also, the S5 packs a removable backplate, just like the S4 Active before it, with a rubber gasket on the inside, keeping the water away from the battery and the SIM and microSD card trays. However, that means that you'll have to properly snap in place that backplate each time you'll take it apart, otherwise you'll lose the protection. At the same time, the micro USB slot needs to be covered with a small plastic cap as well. Behind the backplate sits the battery, which is replaceable and supports wireless charging with the appropriate rear panel. And since we're here, you should know that the SIM and the micro SD card trays have been merged into a single piece, like we've seen on the Galaxy Note 3. The SIM sits below in this ensemble and requires you to remove the battery in order to access it, while the microSD tray is on top and can be accessed without removing the battery. There's also a speaker on the S5's back. It's fairly loud but tends to make the entire phone vibrate strongly, especially when pumping up the volume. That's annoying and I've yet to find a solution to fix this, but I'm still looking. Anyway, let's flip over this handset. You should know that the S5 features a notification LED placed in the upper left corner circular and fairly visible. It's an RGB LED and can be customized to blink in a handful of colors with the appropriate app. Under the screen you'll notice the S5's new physical home button. It looks a lot like before, but it feels and sounds different when pressed, more rigid and clunkier. It also integrates a fingerprint sensor, which only works by vertically swiping your finger over it and not by holding it on top like on the iPhones. Those aside, it's time to get dirty with the software. Samsung bundles Android 4.4 KitKat on the S5 with a redesigned TouchWiz skin. It features the standard KitKat features like Google Now integration on the home screen, the wallpaper stretching behind the system tray bar on the home screens, the lock screen full album covers for the music player or the ability to easily swipe between the installed launchers. On the other hand, Samsung chose to do plenty of things their own way. For instance, they still pack the characteristic set of quick toggles accessible from the home screen by swiping with two fingers from the top. Swiping from the top with a single finger reveals the redesigned notification panel. Then Samsung finally went with a back home multitasking buttons layout on the S5, which means that the settings are now accessible via the three dot symbol in the upper right corner of the interface, just like with all the other KitKat running smartphones of the moment. This change led to a few others. Tapping and holding on the home button now launches S Voice or Google Now according to what you chose from the settings, while tapping and holding on the multitasking panel launches the home screen customization pane, which is also available by pinching the display or by tapping and holding on any free area on the home screens. From here you can add wallpapers, widgets and customize the home screens options, which basically allow you to show or hide the My Magazine window. This one is displayed when scrolling to the outer left home screen and curates news sources and social signals into a flipboard-like interface, just like on the Galaxy Note 3. From the home screen, you also get to create folders if you want to, by tapping and holding on an icon and dragging it to the folder option that will appear on top. In a similar way, you get to delete apps or widgets from the home screens, or actually uninstall apps directly from the app drawer. An app drawer which has been redesigned and no longer hosts a different widgets tab. Those are only available from the home screen customization panel now. Samsung also bundles a few apps and interesting new modes on the S5, but again, I'll leave those for another video. Right now, I will get into a few tips that should help you extend the phone's battery life. The S5 packs an AMOLED panel, and this one is designed to completely switch off its black pixels. Thus, if you'll choose a black static background, this will help you squeeze more juice out of the phone. Also, you should know that the new screen is brighter than on the S4, but pumping up the brightness level seriously eats through the battery. So if you want to get the most out of it, use the auto brightness mode and play with the brackets. Aside from this, the radios are important consumers in a modern phone. So make sure to turn off things like 4G, NFC, location or Bluetooth when not using them. Anyway, there are other things I could add in here, but you'll find more energy saving tips in a dedicated clip, so you'd better check it out in the description below. Another thing many of you have been asking is how to take a screenshot on the S5. The answer is simple. 
just like on the S4, either by pressing the power and the home buttons at the same time, or by activating the swipe to capture screen gesture from the settings. The latter is a bit difficult to master, while the first is really simple and straightforward. Speaking of gestures, Samsung did cut off some of those implemented on the S4, and what's left is quickly accessible from the dedicated section in the settings. About the settings, you might have noticed that they were redesigned. You can arrange them in a grid or list formation and have the different groups of icons displayed as separate tabs. The entire arrangement is still not very intuitive, but you can add the most used options in a list of quick settings as the first tab, and once you get used to that, you should be able to quickly find what you're looking for in here. Oh, and we did talk about the screen earlier, but I forgot to mention that the S5 still packs a higher sensitivity mode, which allows you to tap the screen with gloves on. Last but not least, I did notice a few things on the camera interface. First of all, the settings have been crammed into a single menu. However, the ability to turn off the camera's shutter sound is still missing from this phone, and the only way to actually do it is to put the S5 on mute. If you're living outside of Europe, there might be a disable shutter sound option for you in the menus. Over here though, the legislation interdicts it. Also, the camera still supports voice commands, and there's a small icon letting you when they're active. These work alright, but I still rather use the actual touch buttons or the phone's volume down button which acts like a shutter key. Besides this, I did notice that the S5 tends to catch rather shaky pictures in poor light, with a flash off. In this case, activating picture stabilization from the settings works wonders and allows the camera to take some usable, stable stills. Anyway, there are a few other things I could tell you about here, like the shooter's ability to take 4K videos, fast and slow motion 1080p recordings, or the background defocus shooting mode. I could also tell you that Samsung chose to bundle only a small number of shooting modes on the S5 by default, and more are downloadable from Samsung's store though. But again, I'll keep that for a future video. A video that will be available on the channel in a few days, as I mentioned above, as I get to familiarize myself with the Galaxy S5 and dig through all of its changes and additions. Until then, let me know in the comments below if you're interested in anything in particular about this phone, any of its features, and subscribe so you won't miss my new updates. Last but not least, if you like this clip, make sure to share it around and hit the thumbs up button, that really helps us a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys really soon.